Hey everyone, my name is Rudy and we are here. This is going to be week number four of the PCL and this is going to be a really interesting matchup. I am up against uh, It's Sock, host coach of the Minnesota Twin Needles. We had to play this match on Showdown. I was able to gen up his team and battle this one against myself. So uh, this is a recreation. It is um, me battling myself. But for right now, this is going to be the matchup. Um, he actually brings the Torterra. I think it might be one of the only times him br he's bringing the Torterra. And uh, he has a Dialga. Obviously, Dialga is super duper scary. Um, I've seen him run an Assault Vested Dialga in the past. So that was kind of my thinking going into this matchup. That he would want that to kind of be a hard counter to my Magirna as much as it can be. Um, Mega Heracross is super scary. Doug Trio is the fastest thing on his team. So I, was, I did have it in my head that... Um, he would want it to be Scarf because of my Magirna and its ability to shift gear up. So I did try to have a few measures against that. Um, Flygon's there. It wouldn't surprise me at all if that thing was Scarfed, but I don't quite know yet. Uh, Torterra is going to be a huge problem. Zapdos, I have such bad luck against teams with Zapdos. Zapdos, I uh, often don't draft well against the Zapdos. And it ends up doing the most to me. I'm really bad against it historically. But I'm going to get into this match. Um... I'll, I'll explain a bunch of my team, but basically, my Magirna is kind of the center stage for this team. Uh, it is weakness policy, and I built it specifically at plus four, so after two shift gears, to outspeed his entire team with a Scarf. So a Scarf Dug Trio, um, which is the fastest mon, it can outspeed after two shift gears. And I do have a weakness policy, and I built it specifically to be able to take um, Max Attack uh, Earthquakes from Dug Trio or the Flygon. Um, and that was pretty much the thing that I was most worried about, so I could take that from full and get my weakness policy off. But we start off here, turn one. We just see um, my Tornadus lead up against his uh, Flygon. It just U-turns out. That's totally fine. I end up landing the Hurricane on the incoming Dialga. Now, I actually clicked uh, Super Power on this turn, but uh, he clicks Ice Beam. I have a very slow Tornadus. I think I, think I have a no-speed Tornadus. I really do like just full bulk tornadoes and just having its natural speed come through but um the fact that ice cream took me out means 100 percent that uh this thing is specs so um i was actually planning on taking that ice cream obviously and i had a wiki berry so that would have gotten me up to up to really healthy and then um i could switch out get the regenerator and basically be back up to full but now that i know that he's choice i go into my magirna to try to take an ice beam and uh i knew he'd have to switch out so he ends up switching out into the flygon and flygon goes straight up for the eq and like i said i could specifically build my magirna to be able to take these hits pop the weakness policy like happens here but in the actual match he ended up critting me and uh that crit prevented me from doing anything i would have gotten my two shift gears up so i outspeed this entire team even with or without a scarf and uh i got my weakness policy off but i ended up just going for another shift gear just to burn a turn because uh, like I said, in the showdown match, he crit me, and uh, in this recreation, I take it as I should, which is exactly what I planned for, but uh, that's not how it ends up happening in the match. Um, so from there, I don't know what to do, man. I'm just kind of stuck. At, at, at this point, I honestly felt like I lost the match because my biggest... my biggest centerpiece mon in this on this team just went straight down and i was a little bit on tilt um but i'm trying to play this out a little bit um i know that he is scarfed for sure so uh i know i'm able to take advantage of bringing my electros and u-turning and uh again this was a little bit of a tilt play i, I felt like look i just want to do whatever i can in this match so um i wanted to play a little brainless i u-turn into my um into my Coma O, and I just try to drag and dance up. Now I didn't know this at the time, but this um, I, well I, I didn't know for sure at the time, but this uh, trio is in fact scarfed, which again I prep for. I knew that it was one of the one of his mons most likely to be scarfed because of my Magirna and shift gearing up. Um, but he's scarfed. He ends up switching back out, and I know that I have to drag and dance twice to even have a chance in this in this match. And um, I'm actually Poisonium Z Coma O uh, specifically for the Azumarill, which he didn't bring, but Hopefully he can do big, big damage against something. Uh, it never actually comes into play. But um, here I just go for the close combat up against his Scarf Flygon. And that's a straight Oko. That is a straight Oko. Uh, so I'm still feeling bad about my Magirna. But maybe I can start doing something. I don't know. At this point, I'm still really discouraged, mind you. I am feeling real, real bad. Because I I think the match is lost. Honest to God. But 
brings back the, the Duke Trio, and I'm expecting this to be like a, a little bit of Toxic Song on his part, just trying to wear down my Como because it can do a whole lot to his team in general. And he ends up going for the Memento. Again, it's a Scarf Duke Trio. I don't know. He maybe could have just gone for an Earthquake, gotten me down, whittled me down with Poison. I don't know. I guess it accomplishes more or less the same thing. But he ends up bringing in the Zapdos. And uh, here, I still feel like my Koma O can still have one big hit in him. So I end up switching out here. And uh, I end up going into my Electros. Now, um, I wasn't thinking about this like actively, but uh, thinking back on it, yeah, of course, um, this is a speed passing league and agility, baton pass, Zapdos is a thing, but it did not come into my mind at all. Um, in prep for this match, but um, regardless, my play was always going to be to try to go into Electros and try to Toxic the Zapdos, because um, honestly, that's my best matchup against Zapdos. But I end up Toxicing the incoming Heracross, and a lot was fortuitous about just how his HP worked out. I believe um, from Jenning his team that he has a 187 HP. So, um, it just ended up working out perfectly where... Uh, a combination of toxic and um uh, so he landed this rock blast in in, in the match it's just a recreation thing but um a combination of toxic and super fangs ended up uh taking down his hp perfectly to zero um it ended up working out absolutely perfectly um but he he in the match in the original match he lands a rock blast and a pin missile back to back and uh, you can see just how much damage Pin Missile is doing. It is doing massive damage to... Well, that was a crit. But it does massive damage in-game. And it brings me down to maybe like 10%. But uh, then I end up missing a Super Fang. Which was uh, super awkward. But I do have um, ways around it. Because uh, he did bring Sub on his uh, Heracross. So, this again, this is a recreation thing. In the match, the way that it happens is... Um, I, I Toxic it as it comes in. I, I take a Rock Blast then hit super fang i take a pin missile then hit super fang and that's the turn it, it it gets ko'd to poison so electros coming in 1v1ing a an agility past mega heracross coming in clutch i love electros and um in comes the zapdos so obviously if i can get a toxic off then i'll try but um again in the original match i was super low so this heat wave takes me out i just knock off because um i don't have any non-attack moves other than I guess Super Fang and Toxic, but uh, that would have. I was afraid that that would have messed up some later calcs, so um, I go for maybe the weakest move, but it still does a decent amount of damage. Electros is super slept on. It has 115 base attack, but regardless, um, I do get taken out to the Heat Wave. Like I said, that's how it plays out um, in the original game, because in the original game, I took a bunch more damage to. Um, to. Uh, the Rock Blast and the Pin Missile. So here I end up going for the return because I kind of half thought expected him to go into the Torterra, but he ends up uh, baton passing into the Torterra. So he might not know yet that I'm scarfed, but I am scarfed. Zygarde, which is I don't know. It was a super awkward position to put myself in, but at the same time I felt like I it was necessary for a few of his mons. Um, regardless, he ends up being a Draconium Z Torterra. Which uh, I know he really wanted Torterra to put in some work. I know um, a lot of the people in in our league wanted Torterra to put in work. But uh, here it is. It's going to devastating Drake, my incoming Como. This was more of a sack. I thought, look, uh, Zygarde is not going to do enough um, in this exchange with between it and Torterra to kind of justify um, me leaving it in there. And Como, oh, maybe, maybe I can bring it in, get one big hit off. But basically, it was just a way of... Um, trying to position myself a little bit better for the end game obviously it would have been a, a, a lot better if i'd gotten one final poison jab uh, off or something like that but i got devastating great on the income uh, on the switch in anyway in comes um my tentacruel i want to threaten ice beam right now and in the original match i clicked ice beam and it did about 40 percent but uh, i couldn't do that because it uh this thing took a little extra damage from um that knockoff earlier in the match so uh to try to recreate some rolls i went for scald instead and um this was a kind of a me giving up play i go for toxic spikes in this in this match and uh the original match because um i really saw no way out him him having the torterra and the 
um, and the uh, Dialga t t together prevents my Zygarde from being able to um, end this match properly, so I, I'm kind of trapped. Those two, Him being able to switch between those two mons and me having to lock myself into a move kind of prevents me from ever being able to win this match. So I collect Toxic Spikes because honestly, I, I thought I had if I had any chance, it would be by getting some chip damage off on the Torterra. But uh, I try to switch out, obviously, into my Zygarde, expecting him to maybe Thunderbolt again, but he ends up going for the Heat Wave. It does a little bit of damage, never burns or does anything like that. So it does put me in an okay position, but never a good one. So I end up going for a Thousand Arrows because I have to lock myself into Thousand Arrows, unfortunately. And um, I do no damage, basically. But um, at this point, yeah, so at this point, the only reason that why I didn't switch out to Tentacruel and, and bring this back in to click return or something like that was because I wanted to bring this down to a 1-0, ideally. And um, it by letting my Zygarde go down... It allows my Tentacle to come back in and uh, just click Ice Beam. But uh, I don't know any, any of the de defensive investments or calcs or anything like that. But I, I knew that I was dealing some chip damage and this thing takes uh, the Ice Beam. In the Showdown recreation or in the Showdown original match, uh, it took it on 6%, which I was super upset by. I really wanted to, to bring this down to a 1 0, but it ends up being a 2 0, which I guess is okay considering that I got critted on my Magirna that was meant to sweep uh, from that moment, but my Magirna set was Shift Gear um, with Bolt Beam and Focus Blast. Now, um, we were talking after the match, and he said that he never had any counterplay to Magirna. He, he, he told me that he thinks Magirna just beats his team if, I, if he didn't crit, which um, was interesting to think about because my Magirna actually can't Oko the Oko the Heracross. It's the only mon that I can't Oko. So first of all, I have to land Focus Blast against the Alga. That's number one. But also, um, I can't Oko the the Heracross even at plus two. But um, we were talking after the match, and I was thinking your play would be to bring in the Heracross. But by the time you realize that I don't have a fairy move, I'm gonna assume that I'm at, at at least like plus four due to Soul Heart because Weakness Pulse gets me to plus two from there. And then I straight up Oko thing. So the so that Flygon was there. I Ice Beam that. I get to plus three at a minimum. Then his next play would probably be to bring in um, Dialga, I'm guessing. I Focus Blast that, and that's a plus four. And maybe at that point he realizes that, that I don't have a fairy move, then he brings in the Heracross, and then it's just Heracross, Torterra, and Zapdos against the rest of my team, which I kind of feel good about that matchup. That's all complete theory modding. If anything, he might still think that I have Dazzling Gleam, that I don't have Thunderbolts or something like that. If he brings in the Zapdos, then I'm a plus five, and um, and then I believe I start to threaten Noko onto Heracross, but I think Heracross takes a plus four Thunderbolt, if I'm not mistaken. I'd have to look into it again, but... Um, Magirna at plus two takes out his entire team except for the Heracross and it's only a matter of time and it's only a question of how long it takes him to realize that I don't have a fairy move but um with that I think that's gonna be it for me thank you guys so much for watching we'll be back really really soon with more weeks of the PCL and we have a few more leagues lined up in the coming future so that'll be really really fun but once again thank you guys so much for watching I'm gonna be once again out